Welcome to our latest video on the basicity of amines. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to understand that amines are bases due to the presence of a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom. You should also be able to describe the reactions of amines with acids and be able to write chemical equations for these reactions. And finally, you should be able to understand and explain the factors that determine the degree of basicity exhibited by amines. Now on our previous videos on the topic of amines, we've learnt that amines are nitrogen compounds in which one or more of the hydrogen atoms in ammonia, NH3, is replaced by an alkyl or aryl group, and the number of alkyl groups determines whether the compound is a primary, secondary or tertiary amine. So primary amines have one alkyl group attached to the nitrogen and two hydrogens. A secondary amine has two of the hydrogens on an ammonia molecule replaced by alkyl groups. And a tertiary amine has three alkyl groups attached to the nitrogen. Now amines are classed as bases as they have a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom which allows them to accept a proton. Now the term base is used to describe a substance that is an electron pair donator or a proton H plus acceptor. In water, smaller amines such as methylamine dissolve and will form alkaline solutions. So if we look at the equation here, we have methylamine CH3NH2 plus water forming a CH3NH3 plus ion and OH minus ion. And the hydroxide OH minus ion formed causes the solution to be alkaline, so the amine will turn red litmus blue. Now amines with longer hydrocarbon chains may not be water soluble because their long hydrocarbon chain will disrupt water's ability to form hydrogen bonds to the NH2 group. However, they still classed as basic because like all amines, they react with acids to form salts. Now pentyl amine is a primary amine and we have a C5H11 group attached to an NH2 group. And when it reacts with hydrochloric acid, the salt pentyl ammonium chloride is formed because the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen can accept a H plus ion from hydrochloric acid to form the salt. In this second example, we have diethylamine, which is a secondary amine reacting with hydrochloric acid. And once again, the hydrochloric acid gives a H plus to the amine. So we form the salt diethyl ammonium chloride, which is CH3CH2 in brackets 2, NH2 plus Cl minus. Now the basicity of amines depends on two factors and the main factor is the availability of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom, whilst the second factor is the solubility of the protonated amine in water. Now primary aliphatic amines are stronger bases than ammonia due to the presence of alkyl groups. Now alkyl groups are electron releasing. They push electrons onto the nitrogen and make the lone pair more available. This means that as you have a longer hydrocarbon chain, a longer alkyl group, there's more push of electrons onto the nitrogen, there's a bigger electron release in effect, the lone pair is more available on the nitrogen and the basicity increases. So propylamine is a stronger base than ethylamine, which is a stronger base than methylamine, which is a stronger base than ammonia. So now let's look at the basicity of some aromatic amines. Now the first aromatic amine on the left is phenylamine and if we have an NH2 group directly attached to a benzene ring these aromatic amines will be weaker bases than ammonia because the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen can delocalize into the benzene ring. This means that the lone pair is less available 
and therefore is less likely to bond with a H plus ion. And this means that these aromatic amines are weaker bases. Now if we look at the molecule on the right, this aromatic amine is called phenylmethylamine. Now the amine group is not directly attached to the benzene ring. So this means that the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom does not delocalize into the benzene ring. And therefore this results in the compound having similar base strength to aliphatic amines such as methylamine. So now let's look at the basicity of secondary amines. Now secondary amines have two alkyl groups attached to the nitrogen. Now alkyl groups are electron releasing groups. They push electrons onto the nitrogen. So if you have two alkyl groups, as you do in secondary amines, compared to the one alkyl group in a primary amine, there is more push of electrons onto the nitrogen and the lone pair is more available. Therefore, secondary amines are stronger bases than primary amines. So diethylamine is a stronger base than ethylamine because two alkyl groups are pushing electrons onto the nitrogen in diethylamine compared to one with ethylamine. So now let's look at tertiary amines. Now because tertiary amines have three alkyl groups attached to the nitrogen, you might logically expect that tertiary amines would be stronger bases than both secondary and primary because there's three alkyl groups pushing electrons onto the nitrogen. However, this is where the solubility factor comes in. Tertiary amines aren't that soluble in water and the poor solubility of the protonated tertiary amine would mean that they are less basic than both primary and secondary amines. So if we take into account the two factors that determine basicity, the availability of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen and the solubility of the protonated amine, we have this overall trend for basicity. Secondary amines will be more basic than primary amines, which will be more basic than tertiary amines, which are more basic than ammonia, which are more basic than phenylamine. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions. So read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first question is asking you why propylamine is a stronger base than ethylamine, and there's two marks for this. Well, propylamine has a larger alkyl group, and remember, alkyl groups are electron releasing, so there's a greater push of electrons onto the nitrogen. One mark if you said this. And then this makes the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen more readily available. So there's one mark for that. And question B says, explain why phenylamine is a weaker base than methylamine. So in phenylamine, the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen is less available. One mark. As it gets delocalized over the benzene ring. One mark for that. So now let's look at the reactions of amines with acids. So as amines are bases, they will react with acids such as hydrochloric acid to give soluble salts. Now when an amine reacts with an acid to form a salt, an exothermic reaction takes place, so this would cause a temperature rise, and the fishy smell of the amine is lost. So if we look at this general equation, we have RNH2, which represents an amine, and it's represented a primary amine because there's one R group. And when this reacts with hydrochloric acid, we form the salt R NH3 plus Cl minus. And what's happened is that the amine has gained H plus from the acid. Now, if we look at an example of this, we have methylamine CH3 NH2 plus hydrochloric acid HCl, and we form the salt methyl ammonium chloride which is CH3NH3 plus Cl minus. 
Now there's an ionic bond between the methyl ammonium ion and the chloride ion. Now in this reaction, the amine has accepted H plus from the acid and it's able to form a dative or coordinate bond with the H plus because of its lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. Now the ionic bonding that exists in these amine salts is the reason why many are crystalline solids because the ionic bonding and the strong electrostatic forces between the ions results in higher melting points and boiling points than the original amine. So now let's look at an example with sulfuric acid so here I've added sulfuric acid to phenylamine and I formed the salt phenylammonium sulfate. So phenylamine is C6H5NH2. I react this with H2SO4 and I form the phenylammonium ion, which is a benzene ring with an NH3 plus on it. And the sulfate ion is SO4 2 minus. Now because there's two H pluses with sulfuric acid, I need two phenylamine molecules because each one can accept one H plus and therefore my salt phenylammonium sulfate would be made up of two phenylammonium ions and a sulfate ion SO4 2 minus. Now I could write this without the charges because they cancel out and I could write it as C6H5 NH3 in brackets 2 SO4. Now you may also see this reaction written like this. Now if you had one mole of phenylamine molecules, it would react with one mole of sulfuric acid and you would form one mole of the salt phenyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate because only one of the H plus ions would join to the NH2 and therefore you would have a benzene ring with an NH3 plus ion and a HSO4 minus ion which is the hydrogen sulfate ion. So therefore you'd have phenylamine plus sulfuric acid makes the salt phenyl ammonium hydrogen sulfate. Now the last thing we're going to look at before we do some practice questions is we're going to look at how we convert the amine salt back to the original amine. Now to do this we add aqueous sodium hydroxide or aqueous potassium hydroxide and the addition of aqueous alkali will liberate the amine from the amine salt so here we have methyl ammonium chloride and when we react it with sodium hydroxide NaOH we make methyl amine sodium chloride and water now it's important to mention that amine salts tend to have good solubility in water. So if you carried out this reaction with an amine salt that had a long alkyl chain in it or an aromatic ring in it such as phenyl ammonium chloride or say hexyl ammonium chloride, when you add sodium hydroxide to this the resulting amine would be a lot less soluble than the amine salt. So you would see this crash out a solution and form two layers where the amine would not mix with water. It would be immiscible. So now let's test your understanding of amine's reactions with acid with some practice questions. So read through the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. So question one is asking you to write chemical equations to describe the following reactions. So the first reaction is ethylamine and hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to draw full structural formula here to represent the formula of ethylamine. So ethylamine is CH3 bonded to a CH2 bonded to an NH2 and is a primary amine. And when this reacts with hydrochloric acid, the lone pair of electrons on the amine will form a coordinate bond with a H plus from hydrochloric acid 
and we will form the amine salt. So I'm going to draw here a CH3 bonded to a CH2 bonded to an NH3+. plus. So you can see I've added H plus here to the NH2 and this will attract a Cl minus ion and this is the formula of the salt and there's an ionic bond between the C2H5 NH3 plus and the Cl minus. And in the second question, we have propyl amine and hydrochloric acid. So propyl amine is C3H7 NH2. Once again, it's a primary amine and this reacts with hydrochloric acid to form CH3 bonded to a CH2 bonded to another CH2 and this CH2 is bonded to an NH2 and we're going to add H plus because it's reacted with a H plus from the hydrochloric acid and it's going to form my propyl ammonium ion C3H7 NH3 plus and I'm going to have a Cl minus ion as well and this is going to be called propyl ammonium chloride and it's a salt and there's an ionic bond between the C3H7 NH3 plus and the Cl minus ion and my first salt is called ethyl ammonium chloride and there's an ionic bond between the C2H5 NH3 plus and the Cl minus ion. So here's our second practice question. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's go for the answers to question two. So question 2a is asking you to explain how an amine salt can be converted back into the original amine. Now this can take place by adding aqueous alkali such as NaOH, there's one mark for that. Now question B is asking you to explain why amine salts have higher melting points and boiling points than the corresponding amines. Now this is because amine salts have ionic bonding, one mark if you said that, and there's strong electrostatic attraction existing between the oppositely charged ions, one mark if you said that. And this is obviously going to be stronger than the hydrogen bonding that would exist between amine molecules. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should be able to understand that amines are bases due to the presence of a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom. You should also be able to describe the reactions of amines with acids and be able to write chemical equations for these reactions. And finally, you should be able to understand and explain the factors that determine the degree of basicity exhibited by amines. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos and our Twitter site, at Radicemistry.